there is a growing interest in both species conservation and research on human health in exposure to artificial light at night, like street lights, like even inside your home, the type and amount of light that you expose yourself to voluntarily using devices. And there's a lot of literature right now that's using the light that escapes upward and is measured by a satellite going over as, the, as being equivalent to what you're exposed to on the ground. And surprisingly, that relationship hasn't been completely worked out. Uh, and that's why we needed to do this study, uh, is to be able to relate that satellite data um, and things that come from it uh, to exposure on the ground in our specific purpose for ecological studies on the beach. But this is also really critically important for people studying human health and human health exposures. So there's a number of different ways in which light pollution can affect a wildlife species. What we're looking at right now is the location of shorebirds nesting, uh, roosting on the beach. Uh, our, our hypothesis is they're going to be in the darker uh, spots as opposed to the brighter spots because it'll be safer from predators. Uh, or the location of grunion spawning here in Southern California, this fish that goes up onto the beach to spawn. Um, and our hypothesis there is a little bit different. They uh, maybe don't like too much light, but there's also a life stage at which they're attracted to light. So we'll use these data then to investigate um, ecological phenomena on the ground uh, to better understand uh, how lights influence them and also directly to uh, influence the policies that people have for management of light conditions during the development process.